Today we will be talking about the Baroque. The development of the Baroque came from art's close relationship with the Catholic Church and the triggering of the Counter-Reformation. Around 1545, the Council of Trent was established and made it necessary for art to be clear and intelligible, have religious iconography and meaning, and have a direct emotional involvement in response to the Protestant Reformation. Caravaggio and Caracci, two of the most popular artists at the time, followed these rules with a unique style and technique that drove them deep into the veins of the movement. One of Annabelle Caracci's earliest works and first major altarpiece, The Crucifixion, is an example of the naturalism the Caracci sought in their work. Although not historically accurate, the dark clouds surrounding Christ heightened the drama and tension within the scene. This event is a sacra conversazione because many different saints from different time periods are depicted. Together here are Mary, St. Bernard, St. Francis, St. John the Evangelist, and St. Petronius. St. Francis is seen barefoot, a sign of his humility. Petronius is the patron of Bologna, which can be seen in model form at the saint's feet and in the landscape in the background. This background gives the figure's presence in the actual world. Karachi used light and shade to achieve a natural dramatic effect. The dark clouds add drama to the piece while being a natural occurrence, forming the composition to be classically and symmetrically balanced. The Caracci's were influenced by northern Italian artists who used painterly brushwork. Although simple and following decrees of the Counts of Reformation, this painting was criticised by contemporary artists for its painterly finish. Regardless, this altarpiece was successful for Annabelle as he received more commissions after its completion. Popular pieces that his beliefs have established his high reputation in the art world is called The Calling of St. Matthews. The setting depicts a group of tax gatherers sitting at a table. Formally, we see a strong use of the chiaroscuro technique, the use of exaggerated light contrasts in order to create the illusion of volume. This technique was most popular among Caravaggio's works, along with Caracci's. Furthermore, we can see Jesus in the right-hand side of the piece, creating a delicate gesture with his arm, extended and pointing forward, which can be said removes him from the regular world and automatically places him on a higher level than the other figures. We can also see an action of mimicking, for Matthew, on the further right-hand side, reverses the point onto himself. The use of light shows Christ's embodiment of spiritual force, for the light source seems to be coming directly from his background, sort of as if God or heaven was right behind him, shining its light on a dark room. This is what the chiaroscuro technique was often useful for. There is also a diagonal line created by Jesus' pointed finger, which leads, our, which leads our eyes straight to Matthew. The pointed finger is also accompanied by the movement and direction of the light source, as the point is controlling the light. The two groups are also separated by a void, bridged literally and symbolically by Christ's hand. This hand, like Adam's and Michelangelo's creation, unifies the two parts formally and psychologically. The dramatic part of this piece is that for this moment, no one does anything. Christ's appearance is so unexpected and his gesture so commanding as to suspend action for a shocked instant before reaction can take place.